Hey, what's going on everybody? Steve here, Rake and Profit over at rakeandprofit.com. Coming back to you with another video from inside the warehouse right now. And just wanted to uh, bring you guys a little video and add some value, answer some questions. I know it's been a little while since I've uh, made a video from inside this warehouse. So I know there's a lot of folks who are starting an eBay business, going through challenges, ups and downs, trying to figure out shipping, trying to figure out sourcing, listing, inventory management, so on and so forth. And over the last four to six months, we've been in this warehouse for a little over four months, there's definitely been a lot of learning curves, challenges, um, you know, just things we've had to adapt to and learn, so on and so forth. So we'd just love to give you a little behind the scenes tour of this place and uh, answer some questions. Gonna hang out with you guys for a couple of minutes. And uh, yeah, if you're watching right now, let, let us know where you are watching from. I see Vincent coming in the house. We got Justin Lumbers. I'm in Connecticut right now. It's a really nice day today, surprisingly. In the middle of winter, it's like over 60 degrees, which is pretty incredible. It's getting me ready for Miami. We got Jessica. We got Dawn. Jessica's from Atlanta. Dawn's from Washington. Lane is from California, Phoenix, Missouri. Ask some questions as well. Let us know where you are from and let me know what the biggest challenge is that you're dealing with. If you have a specific question regarding shipping or sourcing or dealing with death piles or motivation, feel free to ask a question and I'll shout you out. And, uh, Hopefully answer your question and help you out. We got San Diego in the house. What's going on? So yeah, this is a lot of people want to know about the warehouse. The warehouse is a little bit over 1200 square feet. It's $750 a month, $750 a month, but there's a lot more expenses um, and costs associated with it, such as labor, paying employees, uh, business internet, which is super expensive. We couldn't get the business internet uh, for less than $140 a month over here, which was pretty crazy. You've got supplies, then obviously you're gonna have shipping fees, listing fees, garbage, uh, electric, gas. So it just goes on and on. Jessica is asking, do you use a spreadsheet or just eBay seller tools? Are you talking about bookkeeping? For bookkeeping, I, I we use QuickBooks and I have a bookkeeping uh, company, but the way that we create our profit and loss statements is we obviously compile all of our expenses. Um, but when it comes to our income and downloading reports, we do that all through eBay, right? So you can get the shipping, you can get your listing fees, you can get your total sales. Um, and then it's just a matter of putting it all together. I have a virtual assistant, shout out to Kaylee who helps with that. We got rideshare reseller in the house. How many people help you run your operation? Right now we're at two people uh, part-time, anywhere from 20 to 30 hours a week each. And the roles that they're filling right now is listing, right? So uh, let me uh, disconnect this real quick and I'll show you guys around. So this is the, the listing area right over here. We've got two Amazon Basics photo cubes. If you go to rakeandprofit.com slash cube, you can actually check those out. They're really cool, they're like 100 bucks and uh, they're great. They all light up. I don't have the, for some reason, the outlet's not working right now, but um, it lights up. It's great. It's awesome. We've got a little shipping area with some supplies, some rubbing alcohol, tape measures, scissors, so on and so forth. There's a big mess going on right over here because, uh, well, I just sent out a couple Amazon shipments. Um, we've got some packages that are going out for tomorrow. And then we got a big mess. It's my little office area. It's, it's a little crazy over here right now because I've uh, been shipping out a bunch of products. So we got the Dymo printers, the MacBook Pro. You know, you gotta stay hydrated. Health is wealth in 2020. Got a bunch of uh, water right here. And then we have a little coffee area. And then this is where all the magic is being stored. We've got about 700 items listed in inventory right now. Much of this is consignment product. We do have items from pallets that we just, uh, well, we almost finished processing the pallets. We had like seven pallets, so we're pretty much all done with them. This is just some of the stuff we're lighting up together. And I'll show you how big some of these pallets are. This thing's huge. So this thing, well, this thing was like way up here, but we had to cut it down to get into it. 
a couple little big items in there we haven't processed yet. Um, just some stuff over here we still have to process. We got some supplies. Things are a little messy right now because I've been going crazy processing some, uh, some Amazon stuff and products. And it's a little crazy in here right now. It's a little messy, but hey, like someone said in the comments, it means you're busy. What's up, Michael? Jessica says, I'm gonna look into QuickBooks. Yeah, QuickBooks is good. I would recommend though, if you're selling on eBay, uh, GoDaddy Bookkeeping. GoDaddy Bookkeeping's great. It's only $100 a year and uh, it'll link up to your eBay. It'll link up to your credit cards, your bank account, and it's just, it's awesome. And then you could separate all your expenses from um, you know, the products that you buy to listing fees, to shipping fees, to office supplies, so on and so forth. So G Ferris is, at, Ferris is asking, are you going to keep this going after the move? The plan is yes, but I'm not gonna lie to you guys, there's a lot of challenges with the move. So the goal right now is to move forward with, a, uh, with keeping this open. And I've got someone who's helping me out on the ground while I'm gone. But uh, if you can see back there, we got one, uh, probably, hold on, let me see if I can flip this camera around. So we got some security cameras installed. So there's one, there's two, and then all the way in the back, that's three. And then we have one outside. So uh, we, got some, we got some security systems that are installed. And um, if you guys are wondering what security I'm using, it's, it's called Nest, company's Nest. And uh, it's really cool. You just access it from your app. So anytime I'm at home, if there's movement, anything like that, I get notified and it's, uh, it's pretty cool. So we're using the Nest uh, security cameras to kind of keep an eye on employees, to keep an eye on shipments, uh, to keep an eye on, that just freaked me out for a second. I'm like, who's in my warehouse? It was a mannequin right there. <laughs> <laughs> um, getting crazy. I'm getting crazy all alone in the warehouse by myself, but I forgot what else I was saying, but yeah. Oh, the goal. Oops. Canadian reseller is now a moderator for your channel. Holy crap. I just made somebody a moderator. All right. Well, you're a moderator now, man. Canadian reseller moderate the feed for me. All right. So, <laughs> Okay, I just removed you as a moderator. I still love you. Canadian reseller, I still love you, but I hit the wrong button by accident. All right, let me see if we got some questions. What kind of pallets? So in here, there was a lot of medium-sized products. Uh, one of the pallets was supposed to be a quote-unquote high-end pallet, and they told me, oh, it could be MacBook Pros, this and that, GoPros. It could be really good stuff, and it came from a good source, and it was a bunch of shit. It really, it was not that good. So I'm kind of burnt out from the pallets. I don't trust what anyone has to say about pallets at this moment. And I, I don't even want to come within 10 feet of a pallet, especially based on like the, the charges I was paying for freight. It was, ugh, ugh, I don't want to get into it. Um, yeah. So here's some of the stuff that came, came from one of the pallets. This is a, uh, this is a Flickr A1. I have no idea what it is, but it's a little cool little scooter right here. A lot of the items from the from the pallets, the medium-sized pallets, uh, were pretty good. They were $50 to $100 items, and uh, we're actually running out of room on the shelves right now because we actually had quite a bit of uh, goodies. I mean, here's some of the stuff we got, some Brother, some of the Brother QL700s. These things are nice. These things are brand new. We've got all different types of stuff. This was just a random electronic bin of crap that we got from uh, the pallet that we decided to uh, just sell in a lot. I mean, we got squatty potties. We got all types of stuff here. There's all types of products that we sell from toys to, uh, you know, baseball mitts, right? This is a saver's find. We got DVDs, CDs. We got laser jet ink. Um, this is a, uh, it's a dog bed. We got a dog bed. It's like a six foot dog bed, right? All types of products, as you can see, that we're selling here at the warehouse. Let me see what we got for questions. Let me roll through some questions. Where the questions at? It's like hard to see them. Um, for some reason, the questions are like off the board now. Either way, it's all good. But yeah, if you got questions, ask away. 
bulk books. I have a lot of friends who are having success with bulk books. Um, I'm not super educated when it comes to bulk books, but there's people out there that are making it happen. The only thing I'm going to say about it is the people that are doing bulk books, they have warehouses, they have employees, they have a lot of overhead, and you've got to be really good at processing books. If you guys don't follow Reezy Resells, check him out. He's a stone cold killer on YouTube, good friend of mine. Love, love me some Reezy Resells. Definitely an inspiration to a lot of us, but he's been getting into bulk books. And, uh, you know, he's got a warehouse overhead. He's spent a lot of money, um, you know, uh, getting his business off the ground, buying forklifts. And, you know, it's inspiring to watch his journey. Um, so it just depends on what you're looking for in your business, right? Are you looking for a more of a lifestyle business? Do you want low over overhead, high overhead? What's your risk to reward tolerance? Um, so on and so forth. I gotta plug. I gotta plug this phone in the, the wall real quick because I'm gonna lose you guys, and I don't want to lose you guys. If you guys are enjoying this, do me a big favor and smash, smash that like button. All right, there we go. What's up, Betty in Indiana? Junk man says you already have all the knowledge to add bulk books to your model, but I'm moving to Miami, so. It's kind of tough right now with uh, with my goals and whatnot. Wow, I am I'm making you guys so dizzy right now. I know. I apologize. I'm trying to read through the comments. How come you're moving? Canadian resellers asking. Go watch the video. I put out a video. I'm moving to Miami, or else it'll be a long response. Quick question from Frank on your first link in the description for free template on listings. It says 404 error. Am I doing something wrong? I'm not sure. Maybe the link expired. I will check that out after this video. Take a nootropic, a nootropic for overcoming procrastination. I've looked into nootropics before. Uh, the only nootropic I've really used, nootropic, I don't know how to pronounce it, is uh, L-theanine. I know it's like very low level, but if you mix uh, L-theanine with a cup of coffee, uh, it gets you going pretty good. Uh, Keith, what's up, Keith? Good to see you. Wow, it's so hard to scroll on this thing. Michael says, I lived in Boca Raton, not far from Miami. You need to visit it. It's beautiful. That's awesome. You still in the area? Jessica's asking, is there more profit in home goods versus clothing? Um, I think there's profit in both of them. Um, I found that in Connecticut, I could find a lot more clothing, um, but it really just depends on your area. That's why when you're first getting into reselling or you're a reseller now, you got to taste the different flavors. You got to check out the Salvation Army, the Goodwills, the Savers, your auctions, your Facebook marketplace to see what opportunities you have in your area because we're all going to have different opportunities. If you live in a very, uh, I don't know, richy, richy neighborhood or it's very affluent or there's a lot of... Uh, colleges in the area, you're going to have great opportunities with the books. Whereas if you're in the middle of nowhere, there's not really a lot of schools, maybe you're in lo lower income areas. I've found that books aren't going to be as good of as, uh, as good, uh, of an opportunity. So you've got to try out the, the stores, learn as much as you can. That's one of the keys, right? Is when you're starting your reselling business, learn as much as you can about handbags, right? About clothing, about jewelry, um, about hard goods, right? board games, puzzles, video games, DVDs, media, CDs, sporting equipment, baseball gloves. Learn about it all as much as you can. And there's actually a free guide that I have. It's called 100 uh, Amazing Items to Resell. If you Google that, just type it in, free download. Uh, you can check that out. There's 100 ideas, right? 100 great ideas for uh, you know buying and selling. But then you got to figure out what's a good opportunity for you. And it's different everywhere. It's different everywhere. I'm going to make myself my own little tripod right now, just like this. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's good. Whew. My arm was getting tired. When buying wholesale, what do you look out for? There's a lot of different things to look out for. Just type in rake and profit wholesale. I've got a couple friends of mine. Um, my friend Dan Metters, they've been doing multiple millions per year with wholesale. And I've interviewed them because I'm not a wholesale expert, but I've interviewed and recorded like 30, 40 videos with them. So if you check that out, there's a lot of different, um, there's a lot of different pieces of content that you can learn from. And it really depends if you're eBay versus Amazon. We've talked a lot about wholesale on Amazon on my channel, but with eBay, 
Um, if you're buying wholesale, it all comes down to the margins, right? At the end of the day, you've got to ask yourself, okay, maybe I can buy 50 of these Sony cameras for $18. I see they're selling for 65. It looks like a good deal. You could probably double up your profit after fees and shipping and labor. But then you got to take a look in the sold listings and ask yourself, how quickly are these selling? Because you could buy an item for 18 that sells for 75. You could double, triple your money, but how often are they selling? And this is something that even comes back to thrifting and garage sales and sourcing in general. High profit is great, but it's not always going to be the, the be all end all. If it doesn't have a, a good turnover, if there's not a, a good size market for it, you could be sitting on these items, right? So that's why when you're new, I prefer, uh, you know, not going super, uh, super deep on an item. I'd rather go wide. What does that mean? I'd rather buy 25 different items versus one item of 25 quantity because you're new, you don't understand the market as well and you get burned. So those are definitely a couple of things to consider in general of buying and selling and wholesale. Do you have a Facebook group like Reezy and Romer? I don't right now um, just because of time constraints and I know how much time guys like Reezy Resells, Romer, Rockstar Flipper, I know how much time they put into these groups. So I've kind of just hesitated on it, but I've thought about it. But right now I don't, but definitely check out those guys' groups. They've got some really, really uh, good content in their group. And it's great to surround yourself with like-minded people. Get around people who are going places, who are going to similar places that you want to arrive at, whether that's a $5,000 a month business or you know a $10,000 a month business or just starting an eBay business or an Amazon business. This is important to surround yourself with as many positive people as you can because you're gonna hit challenges. We've hit plenty of challenges in this warehouse. I'm looking around and I'm looking at our inventory. I'm looking at you know our shipping area. I'm thinking about the employees that we've hired. And each system in this warehouse has come with a lot of challenges and that's gonna happen in your business as well. When you're learning sourcing, when you're learning listing, when you're learning shipping, when you're learning how to reprice your items, you're gonna hit roadblocks you're gonna hit challenges Keith says I'm lucky no one's selling books in Ireland I get them for pennies and a lot for free to sell on Amazon but still love eBay for international folks out there who are running YouTube channels even or, or selling products affiliate marketing digital marketing eBay Amazon sourcing from thrift stores I know quite a few international folks who are just crushing it because the competition not everywhere but in certain places, the competition is very low. Matter of fact, I met a friend of mine. He's making over 100, he's on pace to do $150,000 profit, profit just this month selling his course. He teaches people how to start social media agencies. And you, you guys get hit by all the Facebook ads. It's really competitive. It's actually very tough to sell courses online right now unless you've got yourself a real nice competitive edge. But this guy is crushing it. I'm gonna try to interview him soon because it's crazy what he's doing, but uh, he's in Germany. And uh, just, I know a lot of people internationally who, oh, man, if you speak another language or especially if you're sourcing thrift stores in certain areas, if there's good products, you can have a great advantage over the competition. What about designer handbags? I'm not an expert when it comes to designer handbags. I know there's a lot of money in them. If you know how to tell what is real and what is fake, there's a lot of guides on eBay, so if you ever find like a coach bag or a Gucci or a Chanel, uh, you could type that into eBay and type authentication guide and you could typically you know, find guides that break down what to look for, whether it's the, the stitch pattern or how it feels or the serial number, so on and so forth. But I know eBay will flag a lot of new sellers who are trying to list items uh, that are like highly, uh, how do you say it? Uh, they're counterfeited often. They're like kind of dangerous items to list because there's a lot of fakes out there. If you know what you're doing, it's a great opportunity. And I see these bags all the time. I just stay away from them because I don't want to get my account shut down. And I've been tricked and I've been fooled in the past. So sometimes you just got to focus on your strengths. What's up, Sandra? What about a Clive backpack? Man, my, my buddy Mike Buzz, uh, Busby... He, uh, he crushed it. He crushed it with that. Did you guys see that video? Those Clive bags, crazy. I've never, I've never found one of those. How do I scroll up? Let's see. Here we go. Any suggestions for starting a local reselling meetup group? We are so secretive of sources, but networking. 
makes the magic. Well, if you want to create like a group or something, there's obviously like meetup.com and there's different websites, uh, like probably on Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist, we could start to accumulate a group. But the best way that I found is by building a brand. So putting out free content on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. Instagram is great to connect with people. When you start adding value, you become a magnet because people, they gravitate to you because you're helping, you're serving, you're giving. So for me, I've been able to start to Connecticut thrifting meetup. I've done meetups in, we just had one in Miami, uh, through the YouTube channel and Instagram. So I would start a social media, uh, I would start posting on social media and start adding value. And that's a great way to, uh, to build up a, a meetup group. And we actually have a Connecticut thrifting meetup going down uh, this next Thursday, January 16th. So if you want to join that, it's 100% free, just a way to give back and connect. You can go to Connecticut Thrifting Meetup Group on Facebook. Just go to the search bar and type in Connecticut Thrifting Meetup Group and uh, you can join that. I believe the market is saturated. I'm not sure what you're talking about. Um, are you talking about a specific item or are you talking about selling on eBay? Awesome. Nice flip right there. I want to know what's been your best sale over the last 30 days. What's something that you've sold on eBay or Amazon and maybe you turned a dollar or two or 10 bucks into 50, 100, 200 bucks. I would love to know. Even if you're watching this replay, drop a comment down below because I know for a fact there's somebody watching right now or in the future who's going to be like, this guy's full of you know what. This is BS. You can't make money online. You can't make money selling on eBay. I go out to the thrift store, I never find anything. So let's prove those people wrong, but not to prove them wrong, but to inspire them to go out there because you're not gonna hit a home run every day. A lot of people are going to thrift stores and garage sales trying to hit home runs. No, you wanna focus on hitting those singles and those doubles, right? And those $10 profit flips, those $20 profit flips. I'm not saying $10 ASP, but finding those items that sell for 25 or 30 consistently, hitting those singles, hitting those doubles. And here's the thing. When you put yourself in a position to get lucky on a consistent basis, you get lucky. You hit that home run. You find that item that sells for 400, right? You find that record that sells for $1,500. What up, Roma to Romer, coming into the house. My main man, we actually recorded his course in this warehouse, which should be coming out the end of January. We're super excited about it. It's called the Book Business Blueprint. Romer's killing it, 24 years old, traveled, the country visited, I think, almost all of the states in the the U.S. besides a couple, and I know we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be moving to Miami together, hitting up some international locations, maybe some international Congress events. We're getting into salsa hard, so good to have you here. Appreciate it. Hit the like button. What's up, knock and roll, junk man? Saying what up to Romer? Yeah, Romer's been changing a lot of people's lives. If you guys aren't following Romer the Romer. Um, Give him a follow on YouTube. Check him out on Instagram. Really inspiring guy, making a big difference on YouTube. My seven-year-old son is so interested in this. He sold his video game for 20, then bought a $14 five-disc CD changer and wanted to sell it. He sold it for 93 on eBay. He is hooked on this. This is amazing. A seven-year-old, a seven-year-old is doing it. This is absolutely unbelievable. If you have kids, you know, I, I don't have kids now, but if I did, I would be teaching them eBay. For sure. I'd be teaching them thrift stores and garage sales. It's an amazing skill set to have. It's a skill set that nobody can take away from you. Once you learn, once you get into the world of reselling, you've got a skill set that could get you out of a pinch, that could put money in your pocket, that could put food on the plate. And it's a great way to add value to this world, finding products, cleaning them up, adding value. Reselling is a, I've taught my mother. I've taught my mom. She's now 64 years old or something. She would be screwed right now because a lot of people are getting into their 60s now relying on the government and social security and they're not paying much. If it wasn't for selling books on Amazon, my mom would be pretty screwed right now. She'd be relying on other people, but now she has her freedom. She gets to go have fun, go thrifting, come home. She has something to do. Instead of watching Lifetime for Women on a Couch now, she's out thrifting and hustling and has a purpose and super proud of her. You know, I've taught hundreds of people online. There's others out here have taught hundreds of thousands of people. So there's no excuse. We got Mama Profits doing it at 65. We got, I think, Michael's seven-year-old son. It's crazy the opportunities that are out there. So just want to say what's up to you guys. Just want to show you the warehouse a little bit. If you guys want to know how we manage our inventory in terms of how we find stuff and how we store it, 
Type in uh, rake and profit inventory management or rake and profit SKU system. I created a video breaking it all down, right? Um, if you need any help with shipping tips or listing, just type in rake and profit shipping, rake, rake and profit listing, rake and profit inventory management. I've made so many free videos, guys, that, you know, there's no excuse. There's no excuse not to, to get after it and go make it happen. So just want to thank you all. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor. Please smash that like button. Share this video with a friend. What's up, Cody from Australia? Hopefully you're safe, man. Appreciate you guys. Just reading some of the comments. I'm not sure if I saw that relating to the auction, but I appreciate it. I'll have to check. I'll have to look at some of these comments after because things are moving too quick. On the phone, it flies by. But I uh, appreciate you guys. If I missed your comment, I apologize. Much love, much respect. Really love uh, creating these videos and holding each other accountable. Hope you have a great day, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks, Betty. Thanks, Cody. Appreciate you all. Thank you, thank you. Go out there, keep on picking and making out money. Peace. Thanks, Michael.